점수 잡는 hackers. So let's move on to the next concept of range and standard deviation. This is a very scary word, but it's going to be a very quick and easy description for it. Well, first of all, what does the range refer to? It's going to be some region that we're interested in. And by definition, we can represent range as a single value. All you have to do is look at the set of numbers and take the largest value, the biggest number, and subtract it by the least smallest number. For example, if I had a set and it is comprised of numbers of negative 15, 1, 3, and 4, the range in this particular example was take the greatest number and subtract it by the smallest. So the range would have a single value of 19 in this case. The second term, standard deviation, refers to the spread of the data we are looking at. So this is the concept definition of what a standard deviation is. So basically, if we had numbers or data points that were scattered a lot, the standard value, standard deviation would be greater compared to a situation where we had a very nice looking trend oriented data point. So that's all you guys need to understand. And the equation that does refer to the standard equation deviation would be to take each individual value and look at the difference with respect to the average and you take the square root and the difference but you do not have to memorize the standard deviation equation all you have to do is understand the basic concept and how to apply it so let's look at number seven and go through this and see as to how can they ask questions so the title states the abdominal widths of male and female spiders and we have the sample size and we can see that we observed more of the male species and the average abdominal width that's what mean means right and the median width and what are they asking for which of the following is best supported by the difference between mean and median of the female and male spiders so the answer choices list the differences so how are we going to interpret this let's go back and look at the mean value first we can see that the average size is about, is bigger for the female. So on average, the female spiders have larger or wider abdominals than male species. And then for the median, it simply means that we're looking at the middle number. So when we look at this as a set, we can see that the average and the median match up really nicely. So they are represented in a very trendy, linear, not a linear, but a very well-rounded representation. And then the second one states that the mean, the overall average is 0.9, but the number occurring in the middle, the median, is a 0.75. So how do you interpret this part then? When we look at the answer choices, we can see of C, there were some female spiders whose abdominal width was much larger than 0.75. That's how we can apply the concepts of data analysis into this particular example. Let's, as a practice, go through the other answer choices. Let's look at A. The abdominal width of most of the females in the sample was greater than 0.9, so let's go back to the graph. If they were a lot greater than 0.9, the average would not pop up as 0.9, right? It means that majority were about 0.9. That's what it means. B, the abdominal width of most of the female in the sample was between 0.53 and 0.55. Well, I don't really know if that's going to hold true, and I think it should be around 0.9, since that's going to pop up as our average. And D, there were some female spiders in the sample whose abdominal width was much smaller than 0.75. Then we can see that with our data point occurring a lot more below 0.75, our average and median would not match up. Okay, so C is the correct version. So let's move on to probability concept. And can you guys tell me what the definition in terms of your own words, what probability means? the likelihood of an event occurring, right? So by definition, probability refers to some ratio. And we can fill out the blanks together, and it's just simply going to refer to number of times that whatever we are interested in, want, is going to occur. And we divide it by the total number 
that is available. For instance, out of the seven days, we are going to pick one day for whichever event. So then the probability would equal to a value of one over seven. So we're going to apply this and look at a particular question. Nothing much. It's just a simple ratio equation. Just take whatever you're interested and divide it by the total number of outcomes possible. So the title states some lizard value for island one and island two. And notice how they're represented in the opposite direction. Two is given first and then one. And what are they asking for? The last part. If we choose one lizard randomly, um, what is the probability that its length is less than 18 millimeters from which island the first island so let's go back real quick and when we look at the length if it's below 18 it means that we are not including 18 so for the first island which island were we looking at island one it's the white bar we have one three five and the final value of six added together so we have one three five and six added together and did they tell us what the total number of lizards were i think they did in the question right it was 50. so all you have to do is divide it by 50 and simplify what is this equivalent to i think it becomes a final value of 15. that's why you choose b and then we're done okay so let's move on to scatter plots and see what this means and how it can be applied to questions. Scatter plots, the basic definition means many different points and we try to fit in the best graph that we can apply. So we have three different types and the first one is called linear regression equation. It simply means that overall the data points match up to or most closely like a line, a linear representation. And the second one is the quadratic equation. It basically means a parabola given where you raise x to the highest degree of 2. That's what a basic quadratic quadratic equation looks like. And then the final one, exponential, where we don't have a particular parabolic function, but you can see that it either increases substantially or it can also decrease according to whatever situation we're applying it to. So how can they ask a question referring to this? They can provide a basic chart, a graph, and ask for the line of best fit or whatever fits best to the model that they provided. So let's look at a particular example and see what we can do with it. So for number nine, they gave us a basic example and let's read the latter part of it. The scatter plot below shows the absorbance of light with a wavelength of 410 nanometers of protein varying concentration measured in terms of whatever units and the line best fit has been drawn. So we are going to anticipate a line and that's what we do see. And what are they asking for? Which one of the following provides the most appropriate model for the line of best fit? So basically, we're trying to look for something that matches with this linear representation. Well, first of all, is the slope positive or negative for this line? Positive. So we can see that, oh, there aren't that many we can eliminate. And we go back and we have to approximate the slope for this instance. So we take the origin, I think they do meet at a zero comma zero. And what other point should we use here? Is there a point that you guys like? Let's take the approximation of, for instance, this point that does fall on the line. We have an X value of 0.4 and then a Y value of 0.6. And all you have to do, according to the previous lecture, right? You guys already know how to find the slope. So put this into a slope formula and we can approximate the slope to be about how much? Yeah, about three halves, 0.5, 1.5. That's why C matches correctly. If we wanted to graph D, we would have to shift it 0.2 units and it would have a linear slope of positive one. But we already know that it passes through the origin. That's why D is gone right away. So you circle C and we're done. So let's do number 10, our final one. Look at the title. They're telling us that we have the height of some plants. Plant shoots grown under constant light at 1212 LD. I don't know what that means, but we have time in the x-axis given in terms of units of 
days. So we have a day passing by, two days, three days, four days, and so on and so forth. And the y-axis refers to the height given in inches. Well, first of all, when you look at the chart itself, what is going on between day one to day four? Which plant is growing faster? It's going to be plant A. It's increasing a lot faster compared to B. And what's happening after that? I think plant A reaches a plateau region and it's not going to grow as quickly as before. But plant B is slowly growing and after a certain point, B is going to be taller than A. And that's exactly what the question is asking for. Which of the following most accurately describes the rates of increases. This means, by definition, the slope of plants A and B, respectively. So we have four answer choices, but if you read through them, it, A matches exactly as to what we anticipated. The rate of increase of A was greater than B until day four. Yeah, we pointed that out. And after that, B grows faster than A from the remaining days. And they do talk about six to 10. Let's go back to the chart real quick and look at six to 10. Yeah, we can see that A slows down, yet B has a greater slope, so it's growing. So throughout this lesson, we went over some basic concepts and equations and terms that are related to the data analysis section. Well, usually these pop up more frequently in the calculator section because they do ask about some tedious calculations and little details referring to the interpretations and application of the chart and graph. So make sure to take your time and read thoroughly and analyze what they're asking for. And if you apply the same step-by-step -step process and use the equations that we went over through this lecture, I think you guys will be good, okay? Good luck, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.